All right, now. I wrote myself a note to look at the clock first. <laughs> Amen. Let me know what time I start. All right. <laughs> and I can be on track. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't want you to cut yourself short. Yeah. <laughs> no. Amen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Is that coughing out here? <laughs> yeah. Amen. <laughs> You know, the book of Proverbs says that, uh, I guess Proverbs 22, 20, have I not uh, written unto thee excellent things in counsel and in knowledge? Um, and uh, it's a personal verse, you know, where God is speaking to us. Uh, and he have it not written unto thee, see, excellent things in counsel and knowledge, that I may make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth unto them that sin for thee. And the Bible says, the righteous studieth to answer, also in the book of Proverbs. And one of the reasons that you read and study the Bible and meditate on it and try to hide it in your heart among many reasons, but one of them is that uh, as you prep yourself, God is going to send people to you because he wants you to answer them with the certainty of the words of truth. Mm -hmm. He's going to put you in a position where people are going to come ask you questions about the word of God. And so he's definitely, he says, have I not written unto thee? Again, we need to take these things personal uh, that the Lord is writing uh, to us. In other words, when you have your Bible, you look at your Bible, when you open it or don't open it, you're making a personal decision. Amen. But God said, now, I wrote it. Again, we studied about it in, in Sunday school. Um, but, you know, he's written the Bible Specifically for me, for you. Amen. Amen. For you. Amen. It's for you. Yes. And without it, there is no way that you can know about it. Right. Now, you can know of him as I will speak to you about it. You know of him as a pastor will speak to you of it, just like Brother Brett come. You know of him, but you know what I know, not yeah. what you know. Yeah. And he's a personal God. He wants you to know him. Amen? Yes. Right. He wants you to know him. He said, therefore have I not written unto thee. The Bible says excellent things in counsel yes. and in knowledge. I remember when we were still over on Telegraph and Charity had said she'd spoken to Brother Arnold one of the last times that he was with us and you know, I asked him uh, I believe in what would you do different or would you do um different in your life. And I think he mentioned that uh, he would concentrate more on the book of Proverbs. I believe that's what he said, you know. And I find that to be a very true statement. And, and if I could encourage and admonish you young people as I'm yes. looking at you, right. you ought to be paying a whole lot of attention that's right. to the book of Proverbs. It was yeah. written specifically for young people. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. Specifically for young people who would grow up in, quote, unquote, a Christian home. Yeah. How you can deal with the world around you because you won't have yeah. the type of uh, uh, worldly experience that someone like myself would have not being saved until I was 22 years, a lot of years, 22 years of age, see. And so right. that, and that book was written specifically yes. for you. And I cannot encourage you enough Amen. that again that is a book that you ought to read through every month along Amen. with your other reading Amen. That's right. you ought to read through that book every month Amen. 12 times a year yeah. because it's really 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 
going to help you. Yes. Depending upon how you receive it. That's yeah. right. Amen. Amen. It will help you and guide you and teach you Amen. and bless you what to receive Amen. and what not to receive. And again, I just wanted to say that for you young people. Again, now I'm not saying that, that you, those who are aged, uh, shouldn't <laughs> read it either. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because it is the life-giving Word of God. Amen? Amen. So um, that's something that I, I practice all my life, and I practice it more now than ever. And after having read through it numerous times in my lifetime, it really is yielding something to me now. Amen. Amen. Because again, you built a foundation. I like how Mrs. Ripplinger put it. Um, it's like a computer. In your continual reading through the Bible, you build up a database in your mind. So that now, after years of reading through it, all of a sudden, it's really impossible for me to read it now Let's say and just read an entire chapter. Now I will have to force myself. I can listen to it on the um, CD. But I can't read through a whole chapter because I have to stop, mark it, and then make two Bible references to a particular verse. Because as Brother Dan, as the pastor was saying, all of a sudden, This thing comes in there. Why? Because you've built up a database yes. of Bible knowledge. Amen? Now, you didn't think anything about it because before we can know anything about God, amen, we got to read it first. Yes. Amen? Amen. And then we got to just keep reading it and then keep reading it and then just keep reading it. Again, <clears throat> having been saved at the age of 22, there are still things in the Bible I read... How, what is that? 40? Over four decades. I still don't know what they mean. Right. Amen? But every now and then, as I'm reading through it, the Lord will say, remember that question you asked me? Yeah. Well, here's the answer to that. Amen. That's right. Praise you know, now, but now, I'd have read through that verse a whole bunch of times. <laughs> yeah. But I never could make that connection. And all of a sudden, he said, all right, let's connect. Amen. Spiritual with spiritual. So I just wanted to encourage you. Yeah. You know, uh, don't don't just let the Bible, particularly for you young people, don't just let the Bible lie there in the book of Proverbs. Again, uh, for those who are not married yet, uh, maybe you won't get married. Again, that's your business. Amen. God's business. But right. After your decision about what you will do with the Bible, that's your number one decision in life. Right. What do you think of the Bible and what will you do with the Bible in your life? In your life. See? Amen. Then second, second in the Bible is whom will you marry? Right, that's right. And that will be determined by what you do with the Bible. Amen. That's right. right. That's absolutely right. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yes. 100%. I'm, not, I'm not kidding you. That's right. And the yeah. Bible clearly states, for a young man, it clearly states. Now, you get the fooling around out here, and uh, you keep rejecting the thing that you learn. I'm going to make sure you hook up. Right. I won't say make sure, but you have a greater possibility of finding the wrong thing wife. Right. And then your life is a wreck. That's right. right. Amen. It's a whole wreck. Now that's another sermon. I'm not preaching that today. Amen. <laughs> but I just wanted to encourage you again. Because there are people saying, well, how in the world can I find the right spouse? Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Amen. God, you. Again, for the world, that seems dumb, right? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately for many a Christian young person, that also seems dumb. Mm -hmm. But it's true. 
Amen, brother. That's one hundred percent true. Amen. Yes. Again, let God be true, Amen. and every man and woman, yes. Amen, right. a liar. All right, let's go. All right, I'm gonna preach today on um, God's just judgment on nations in the world. God's just judgment on nations in the world, Jew and Gentile. Now, I'm not going to specifically be speaking about our country, but I want you to keep our country in mind as we go through these scriptures. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, have that in your mind. But I'm not specifically speaking on America today. Um, I'm just going through the Bible and showing you what God's basis of judgment is on nations, Jew and Gentile. Because God has really taken, um, well, he's really been blasphemed. Let me say it biblically like that. Amen. He's been blasphemed um, in the sense that when people look at the Bible, they consider him the God of the Old Testament. Amen. They want to dis dis uh, divide the, the Old and New Testament and say there's two different gods. Amen. Um, the Lord Jesus Christ is a you know, one of grace, but the God of the Old Testament is the mean, ogre, warmongering, hateful God. Amen. Mm -hmm. When uh, the grace of God is all the way through the Bible. Right. Amen. From Genesis to Revelation. And really that God is a God of genocide. Amen. And then when we think about genocide, you know, we think about people like Pol Pot, uh, Idi Amin. You know, all of the uh, Dars in Russia, China, so forth and so on. That's what we think about uh, genocide, wiping out whole uh, groups of uh, people, amen, mm -hmm. just for the sake of that. You don't like them, amen. They're different than we are. And so uh, God has been blasphemed in that way in uh, that he makes his decisions as men make decisions. Mm -hmm. And God is not a man. Amen. Right. And he doesn't make his decisions that way. So I want to look at these. Now I'm not looking at all of the judgments. Uh, in the Bible the way we could do it anyway. Uh, but I'm just going to pick out four. And come through it. Because I want you to see. Uh, just the basis by which God. Is doing his <coughs> judging. Amen. Mm -hmm. Upon nations. And then from that you can expand that throughout all of the Bible. And see. Again, what are you saying? Now, again, we know that Israel is not reckoned among the nations. The Bible tells us in Numbers 23 and verse number 9. <clears throat> again, and the presence of God separated them from all the people upon the face of the earth. Again, that's the thing that's to separate us from all the people on the face of the earth is the presence of God within us. His Holy Spirit residing all within right. our body. We are the temple. Of the Holy Ghost, the Bible tells us. And the people ought to know that when we go somewhere. Amen. God's right. presence on our life will distinguish us. We don't have to try to distinguish ourselves by all type of outward things, so forth and so on. Uh, you know, but God's presence will distinguish it. It had to deal with the, the nation of Israel. See, amen. But however, right now, they're in blindness. Amen. Amen. They're in blindness right now, in part, the Bible says. And uh, concerning the gospel, they're enemies yes. for our sake, amen, because yes. of their rejection yes. of the Lord Jesus Christ and the rejection of truth and the rejection of their own scriptures, yeah. amen. Uh, and so the scripture says, uh, again, a spirit of slumber is upon them. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and they're in unbelief. Yes. But the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, That's amen. Right. The Lord's going to call them back. Yes. Amen. But right now, they're set aside. Yes. Now, if I had a key text, this would be it. Psalms 145 and verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. Amen. Again, Psalms 145 verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord taught me this when I was in the hospital. Many times I've already uh, explained that situation to you. But the Lord taught me this. 
Again, and this is something that has to undergird all of your Bible reading, whatever you read and don't understand, and that's a lot, because Amen. it's God's book. Amen. Amen? Right. It's God's book. And like the pastor was telling us today, we're going to need the Holy Ghost, right. the Spirit of God to teach us the deep things of God. Amen? Yes. But not necessarily, again, I think sometimes we err, uh, <clears throat> sometimes because we want to know the deep things of God first, yeah. Right. Without knowing God. Amen. And the Bible is given to you and given to me to know God. Yes. That's Amen. Right. That's and right. when I changed what I wanted to do, again, uh, because I wanted to know so many of the things of God, sometimes, uh, you know, meet with people and be able to share with them all these new and neat things I read in the Bible. But uh, the Lord impressed on me, but you don't really know me. Right. I want you to know me. And so I change how I approach the Bible, how I read the Bible. In other words, I really don't ask God. I mean, I, I do ask him, you know, open my eyes, you know, <clears throat> and show me wondrous things out of our law, you know, Psalm 119. Also, the Lord Jesus Christ said, and Jesus opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So, amen. Yep. I got to pray that, amen. Or like amen. the pastor said, I'm nowhere. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. Again, sometimes I find my flesh wanting to run off and just read the Bible. Yeah. And uh, the Spirit say, well, stop. Yeah. Pray yeah. first before you read the Bible. Again, don't approach it like this is my, I'm getting my, I'm getting my Bible work in. Yeah. Amen. Right. Like we get our gym work in. Yeah. Right. Amen. You can't approach it like that. Right. Amen. You got to stop and pray. See. <laughs> and so my prayers change. Yes. See. Again, Jesus said, no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Amen. So I asked the Father to show me the Son. Right. Amen. Jesus said, no man knoweth the Father but the Son. So then I asked the Son to show me the Father. Amen. And then I, have the, then I asked the Holy Ghost to show me the Godhead. Amen. Amen. I need to see the Father the Son. And the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Show me these things. And so this is one of the things that God showed me. Again, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. Yes. Again. Again, Revelation 19, 2. True and righteous are all his judgments. Are. Not were. Are. All his judgments. Revelation 16, verse 7 says the same thing. Again, in Revelation 15 and verse 3, Just and true are thy ways, thou king of saints. Yes. Amen. Again, think on this in respect of the judgment of nations. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Number one, let's just take again, again. Now, again, I'm not covering all the judgments. Amen. But I am covering four basic ones in the Bible. Yeah. And I'm going to start out again with the worldwide flood. Yes. Amen. Again, we got to say that. Amen. Right, worldwide. Right, right. Uh, because right. people want to say, well, it was just regional. Well, no. Mm -hmm. Again, all the evidence all over the world shows you yes. it was not regional. Amen. Right. But that it was worldwide. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so, again, mm -hmm. that's the truth. Certainty of the words are true. Amen. And people are going to ask us about that, and we're going to answer the certainty. Unto them, the words of truth. Now let's look at 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Yes. 2 Peter 2, verse 5. And spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bring in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Right. Look at verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation, but to reserve the unjust yes. until the day of judgment to be punished. Amen. Yes. Again, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, you don't have to turn there, says the imagination of the thoughts of his heart, speaking about man, was only evil 
continually. That's right. Amen. Only evil. Yep. His thoughts were only evil. Continually. 24-7. Amen. Again, in the same chapter, verses 11 and 12, he said, the earth was corrupt before God. Amen. Another uh, word for uh, corrupt is perverse. Amen. Yes. Perverse. It was Amen. corrupt. Yes. It was corrupt before God, the Bible says. And it said it was filled with violence. Yeah. Amen. God's decision to flood the entire world, say Noah. Now, I think it's interesting. In uh, verse uh, number five, it said Noah was the eighth. Amen. Now, we know in the genealogy, Enoch was the seventh. Amen. Uh, so we don't know it wasn't the eighth person, as you read down through there in the Bible. But he was the eighth person to get on the ark. Amen. He's number eight. And I like that because... Uh, Noah made sure everybody was on the ark mm -hmm. before he got in there. Amen. Unlike Lot. Yeah. Amen? Yes. He outran his wife mm -hmm. yeah. trying to get out of there. And she looked back and turned into a pillar of stone. I thought that's so fitting for the time in which you and I lived. I bet Mrs. Lot wished she had one of those patriarchal men. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. That would have been paying attention to his wife, knowing the tendencies of his wife. He said, oh, man, I know my wife, man. She, this is where she raised the kids and everything. She's going to be looking back. I got to be in back. Don't look back, woman. Look straight ahead. Right. Amen? Right. Yeah. Amen. Say, now, you talk to your wife like that? Oh, no, 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 no. No. But if I had to, I would. Right. She knows I would. Right. But I would be behind them. Right. Because I know her tendencies. Right. Amen? Right. You're paying attention. Yeah. See? Now we've got to all get out of here. Now the angel must have said something about not looking back. Amen? <laughs> Somebody must have gave him a reason not to look back. But I said she would have wished she had a man like Noah. Amen? Right. Amen. That's what a woman wished she had today. But no, you're going to get somebody like Lot. Right. Yeah. Leave you to be turned into a pillar of stone. But that's something else. Amen? We don't. We won't That's fool with good, that. Bro. Amen. <laughs> but again, what did the scripture say? Yes. Come on. Psalm 145 verse 7. The Lord is righteous yes. in all his ways and holy in all his works. It was right for God That's right. to flood the entire world Amen. because of the wickedness, corruption, perversion, yes. and violence yes. and their evil imagination. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It was right. Again, people today say, man, if there was a God, the atheist, if there was a God in heaven, why ain't he doing something? All right. Look at all this wickedness. Look at all this evil. Look at all this destruction. Look at all this death. Well, he did something, and yeah. you didn't like it. Yeah. So now he's long-suffering, and you don't like it. That's right. All right. Amen? Yeah. 